Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm at Green Mount Cemetery. We, Baltimore Heritage, do tours at Green Mount Cemetery all the time. And one of the graves that we always stop at is the grave site of a woman named Martha Ann Adivis. She was a domestic servant and she's buried in the family plot of the family that enslaved her. There is a lot to think about. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I am thrilled that I'm going to be joined by my fabulous if occasional co-host Lachelle Bynum. But before I turn it over to Lachelle, uh, I'd like to just set the stage a little bit uh, with one or two things. The first is many of us in Baltimore know that before the Civil War, Baltimore had the highest population of free black Americans of any city in the country. Um, we also had over 5,000 enslaved black Americans living in the city before the Civil War. Three quarters of those were women and most of them worked as domestic servants white families. So the story of Martha Ann Adivis is really the story, at least in part, of thousands and thousands of Baltimoreans. The second thing I'd just like to say is that uh, Greenmount Cemetery is the resting place of a who's who of Baltimore. Johns Hopkins, my namesake, is buried here. He, of course, gave us the hospital and university. Enoch Pratt is buried here, who gave us the Pratt Library System. Uh, William and Henry Walters are buried here, the father-son team that gave us the Walters Art Museum. Museum. They're buried here. Um, Elijah Bond is buried here, who gave us the Ouija board. And John Wilkes Booth is buried here. And well, you know who John Wilkes Booth is. All right, before I turn it over to uh, Lachelle, I'd like to say those were all white Baltimoreans. We have wondered for years how many black Baltimoreans are buried here. We know of one. We're going to talk about her today. We recently, through the research of one of our volunteers, uh, Richard Messick, learned of another uh, black Baltimorean, Alice Davis. Um, like uh, Miss Adivis, she was a domestic servant employed by a white family and buried in the family plots of the family that she worked for. Um, I suspect there are many more uh, black Baltimoreans buried here, and I think Lachelle just told me before we started uh, that she's been doing some research and has some uh, news to share on that as well. So with that, I'm going to stop talking and turn it over to Lachelle. Lachelle, we're all yours. Good morning, everyone. I'm Michelle Bynum. Thank you, Johns, for having me again. On my first tour of the Greenmount Cemetery, I awed the rich history from the stories that were being told by the tour guide. He led us to a wrought iron black gate enclosed with about eight or nine tombstones. This is where the Whitridge family rested. In the front, the first tombstone to the left of, is the grave of Martha Ann Patty Adivis. No great wealth like the Calvers, the Hopkins, the Perkins, and the Lafayettes, bearing the name of streets we cross or buildings we enter, politician or philanthropist. Martha Ann Patty Adivis was in relation to the Whitridge family, but not by blood. A faithful and devoted nurse in the family of Dr. Whitridge for over 36 years is the inscription on her tombstone. Born a slave in 1816, Patty Ann and Phoebe, both invalids, were the only two slaves owned by William and Ruth McCuban. When Will William McCuban died in 1839, he left no will, and upon his appraisal of his property, it was found that Patty Ann was only worth $180. His widow Ruth sold Patty Ann, 23 years of age at the time, to Dr. Whitridge for $200. She would go on to serve the Whitridge family for 36 years through emancipation. Patty resided with William and Catherine Whitridge at 53 North Gay Street. Dr. James Whitridge was born to a family in the medical field, had a medical degree from Harvard in 1819, and moved to Baltimore in 1820. After graduation, he met and married Catherine Cox Morris of New York, marrying in 1830. They had seven children together. Rosamond, Mary, John, Olivia, Anna, and Alice. Their, their daughter, Olivia Cushing Whitridge, died at the age of two. Dr. Whitridge himself owned a small group of slaves. It was not long after he married, he purchased and owned Peter for $147 from Andrew Collins. Thomas was another one of Whitridge's slaves who managed to escape 
successfully. In 1845, Dr. Whitmidge purchased 12-year-old James Spriggs. It was in, eight, in the 1860s that Dr. Whitridge moved his family to 49 North Charles Street. It was in 2000 that Martha Ann Patty Adivis identity was found out by the Maryland Historical Society who through an auction in Sparks, Maryland purchased two images of Patty with documentation circa 1845 to 1860. One was a tintype. An early photograph shows Patty holding the youngest of the Whitridge children. The other one was a daguerreotype photograph shows Patty by herself. A daguerreotype taken of slaves by themselves were very rare and what made this more rare than others it had information on Patty. The package purchased by Mark Metzer of the Merle Historical Society included an 1839 bill of sale identifying Patty as a slave for life. It was in 1866 that Dr. Whitridge wrote his will bequesting to Patty a sum of $100 annually. Patty died prior to Dr. Whitridge. She was not alive when his will was probated in 1878. Martha Ann Patty Adivis was 58 years old when she died February the 26th, 1874. Since writing this story, I have found that there are at least two more black slaves buried with their families in this cemetery. Lucy Boston with the Odalis family and Patience March with the Gilmore family. Stay tuned. Let me do some more digging and I'll get back to you. Thank you. Have a good day.